Hi, so my name is Richard Walkie, and today I will be talking about uh, uh, trains, really, mainly. So, so, let's just jump right into things and construct a hypothetical. Let's say that I magically create a high speed rail train that can go from New York to Chicago in about an hour and is free, just for the sake of my hypothetical. What have I just done here? I have integrated the labor markets, the housing markets, and the services markets of these two cities. What does that mean? Well, it means that Chicagoans can live in Chicago and find work in, and employment in New York. New Yorkers don't have to pay high New York rents. They can live in Chicago, um, where there's some of the lower rents, and commute to New York. And additionally, uh, New Yorkers can visit things like the Chicago Museum of Science and Industry, which is really cool, and the Field Museum. And Chicagoans can go visit Broadway regularly. Um, so there's going to be, so from this magical railroad that I've just set up, there's going to be increased economic growth and a lot better quality of life for most of these people. So how does this happen? How does this magical train affect this kind of magical change? Um, well, it's, kind of, it's through a really, um, actually quite intuitive and natural principle that I like to call a time radius. What's a time radius, you might be asking, Rishi? Well, um, a time radius is any place that you can go um, in a specified amount of time. So your five minute time radius would be any place you can go in five minutes, right? So how does this change things? How does this change the equation? Well, you, go to you will go to places more often and more frequently that are more accessible to you, right? Yeah. So, let's say that you live five to ten minutes small. You're probably going to go there relatively frequently, right? But what about the museums downtown? You're not going to go there very frequently, right? Because that's a lot farther than five minutes. Um, or a really far away place, like Auckland's, let's say, or some other really far away place. You're not going to go there very often, are you? You're not, because it's really hard to get to. It's a long flight, it takes forever, it's just not convenient. Um, so, um, so, how does this, so how can we apply this magical little principle to um, my earlier example with the trains? So, with trains, you can, with high-speed and even with those speed rail trains, you can live in one metropolitan area and commute to the next. So, for example, in California, you can live in the Central Valley in Modesto or Fresno or even Sacramento, and it commutes into Silicon Valley to work. So that way you still have your six-figure Silicon Valley job, but you don't have to pay high San Francisco rents, right? That's the best of both worlds. Um, or, for example, here in Houston, you could live here in Houston, and if your job changed for some reason, you could commute to Beaumont or Austin or Dallas or anywhere else, um, and still maintain residency in here in Houston. Um, but here in Houston, you may have noticed, we don't have that system. That magical system does not exist here. Uh, we instead have cars. Oops. Oops. I skipped a juncture. Um, but we instead have a system of primarily cars and highways. Um, and while these cars and highways do have significant upsides, they're great, fun, but they do have a bunch of downsides, several downsides, not great downsides. Um, and so, firstly, when you've got a bunch of people in their cars who all want to go over the same stretch of path, the same stretch of highway, um, you end up with a thing called a traffic jam, right? I'm sure you've all experienced those. Um, too many people want to go on the same stretch of road, so there's going to be a jamming effect. Um, this will lead to much increased travel times, right? So the travel times are going to go way up, and that's going to make commuting really, and that makes car commuting really exhausting, right? Because not only is it monotonous, it's boring, because um, you're just sitting in traffic on 
45 and 6 nanometer, whichever highway, for like multiple hours a day, which is not fun. Um, but you're also, many people will end up forsaking sleep in favor of being able to get to work on time, particularly if they say work downtown, they will get up very early in the morning and leave so that they can beat the traffic or because they know it's going to take a really long time to get there, right? And that loss of sleep leads to a whole host of physiological and psychological detriments to, to our health, right? So that's not a good thing. Um, now, just a picture of the train. Um, so, how can we apply what we've already just learned about trains to um, this? But first, I actually forgot a thing. Um, in Houston, we actually, it's, in case you haven't noticed, because of these um, really long travel times, because of these really long um, traffic jams, we end up with significant disjunctions in our city. Um, what, do, what do you mean by that, Mishi, you might be asking? Well, it's that, theoretically, you should be able to go from any part of a metropolitan area to any other part of a metropolitan area, right? Because it's all the same metropolitan area, you're supposed to have great commuting ties, it's supposed to be really integrated, it's supposed to be one big city, right? Um, in case you haven't noticed, that's not the case around here. Um, Galveston, which is within our metropolitan area, is not a thing you can just pop over to. You typically have to make a day trip out of it, right? Um, and like NASA, no one would think about commuting from here to League City, where NASA is, on a regular basis, right? No, no one would, that would just be done, right? It would take forever, right? Um, but it's all one metropolitan area. You should be able to go between all of them regularly, right? Um, not here in Houston. So. How can we, so using these train, things from trains that we've learned earlier, how can we solve these problems? Well, if we were able to cross these geographic disjunctions between New York and Chicago using trains, why can't we cross local disjunctions using these trains, right? So, because trains are faster and they're typically able to take more people in less space, you would be able to reduce travel times significantly for Houstonians, cross these disjunctions and be able and be better able to explore um, our lovely metropolitan area of Houston, right? Um, and furthermore, it's not just about being able to better go see downtown or the individual be better able to go see different places around our city. It's also about the fact that it would it will improve the economy, it'll lead to the economic growth. Because now we'll be able to go, people up in the woodlands will be able to go visit Downtown, we'll be able to go visit the museum district, the theater district, um, what, the restaurants on Westheimer much more frequently than we otherwise would be able to. And the people who live down there, who would have never thought previously to come up to the woodlands to eat, to go out, or for whatever reason, they'll be able to come up here and it'll actually be a viable option for them. And so, to wrap up, we need trains! <laughs> These are the reasons why. So thank you.